close enough, right? Um, let's see, it's uh, five seconds early. What's the big deal, right? Hello everyone, it's Friday. That means it's streaming time here at Second Dynasty. Very, very quiet office. Uh, Alvin, unfortunately, has had the flu this week, or a cold, or whatever. In any case, he's been home. So it has been a slightly slower week. Uh, Lisa Lott and I had a fair bit of stuff to do, to do in the beginning of the week. Uh, but of course, she only works part-time, so it has just been me today. Of course, I've got Hannes, uh, my good friend and companion to keep me company. However, um, I have been working on the shuttle. And uh, we're going to be working on the shuttle today. And for anyone who might be picking up on this stream, who's never actually seen what we do before, uh, I make 3D printable starships for tabletop gaming. Uh, and I do it in this program Maya. So we're kind of in the design process of this shuttle. And I've decided on a name for it, and it's going to be Erebus, which is a part of the ancient Greek underworld, it means darkness, something that's sort of like appropriate, I feel, for a shuttle slash lifeboat, um, in the vein of the Narcissus from the 1979 film Alien. Of course, it's been a very big week for Alien. Um, the trailer for Alien Romulus came out yesterday or the day before. Um, and yeah, I have to say, I'm excited. And um, even if it is just a nostalgia fest, cash grab, uh, I don't care. I'm happy to live in those sets. That's enough for me. <laughs> so we'll see where it goes, but I'm excited for this film. It's coming out on August 16th. And we're kind of planning our year around it a little bit, hoping, hoping that we can sort of ride on the coattails of that with some designs that feel like they fit into that universe. So this shuttle is all about that. And, uh, wait, wrong microphone I'm reading now. Of course, this always happens after a, a bunch of time. I can see the microphone's actually not pointed in the slightly uh, right direction here, so hopefully this helps. I'll double check that it's not on the camera. It says it's the right one. So I don't know if it was just pointed in the wrong direction or something. Hopefully it's better now. Uh, for you guys in chat, um, but yeah, let's uh, let's have a look and see. Uh, we've got Brian, we've got that blasted Samaflange, Tamsin, Shergol, Solo Spirit, Thomas, uh, Anders. Uh, who else we got? Oh, and John, of course. So nice to see you guys in there, and I'm sure there are a couple of people that don't have the time or will, <laughs> I guess to work on, uh, to, to write in the chat, I'm sorry. So, uh, okay, so that helped. All I really did was just bring the microphone a little bit closer to my face. So hopefully, you know, John waves at my face. Thank you, John. John, of course, actually has gotten a fair amount of progress done on the Instead miniatures. Um, looks like he's gotten some, yes, I'm alone at the office today, John. Um, he has got, well, Hannes is here. He has gotten uh, several models done, uh, so hopefully next week we'll have something that we can sort of put out and that will conclude the end of the campaign. Alban also has done a bunch of work. He's done numerous different module variations based on John's designs, not mine, so it should be the most printable version um, for the Traveller small craft so that they have passenger modules. So if you had like the pinnace, for example, you could replace the rear of the ship and it would take it, like this design's there so that you could just fill it with passenger seats and that sort of thing. So apparently when we were talking about the 30 ton passenger module for the uh, modular cutter, we also mentioned this. So we want to honor our word. Uh, Lisa Lett has worked on the gig files uh, for uh, the Beowulf campaign. So this is um, PDF um, deck plans. Uh, for print, uh, for that particular craft. We're looking into uh, making sure we can shore up the Beowulf now um, and get those out there so that we have some kind of release uh, for that. And in other Traveller news, it is now official. The papers have been signed. Uh, my Traveller license is no longer with Far Future Enterprises. It is with Mongoose Publishing. 
I don't know all the background information. I imagine that perhaps uh, Mr. Mark Miller uh, is looking to properly retire rather than be semi-retired, and maybe a part of that means leaving the managing of the license to Mongoose. What it does do is it opens up us to the Mongoose license. So we can potentially now produce Mongoose Traveler designs. However, there are some caveats. We're gonna have maybe a little bit less creative freedom that we've, than we have had, uh, a more strict approval process. I'm hoping maybe in the future there could be something a bit more collaborative. Um, but I'm excited for that, and that will be sort of our sort of June, July campaign for the year, looking at bringing some new Traveler miniatures uh, to your 3D printer. But, um, yeah, that's early days yet. We're going to be focusing on this. Uh, what do I think about the Betty from Alien Resurrection? You mean a Mantis class uh, ship? I, I like the design, actually. Not all of it, but parts of it. We used it in our Alien game, although uh, their version of it crashed uh, a couple of sessions ago. And they ended up on a Soviet spaceship full of working Joes that were, funnily enough, malfunctioning. Um, so that's fun. So yes, here is the Erebus. Um, and I need to find a suitable name for the ship. I'm almost thinking along the lines of something like unusual, like... I don't know if it fits well with a campaign name, um, but I'm thinking maybe for the main ship, something like Persephone. Um, according to legend, it, like, you know, Persephone was a beautiful uh, woman that Hades basically kidnapped and married, um, but she had to spend half of the time in the underworld and half of the time up in the surface, that sort of thing. I don't know, like, sort of like finding some Greek myth that kind of also fits in it. And it's appropriate to this sort of like um, dark corporate um, biomechanical nightmare of a future. <laughs> so um, I've been talking to John today. We've been doing some test printing. Um, and hello, Stosh from Calgary. And uh, you just missed the news about Traveller. I've got Mongoose Traveller licensing now. Um, so yeah, there we're at. We are there. Sorry, my language skills apparently are lacking today. Uh, let me switch to the uh, close-up camera real quick. And I just wanted to show off this, which is the very first prototype for the shuttle. It's actually upside down, I realize now. Um, there are some corrections to make. Um, it will... The lid will come off like so. Uh, this actually holds in place fairly well by itself. I'm quite happy with that. It kind of has this jigsaw sort of connection um, The pipes here we'll have a look at the close-up version soon We John and I were talking about how to best optimize Those floor tiles and God yet again. I need to clip my bloody nails um, So yeah nice little detail there um, Bit of room for expansion, a couple of different ideas that I'm putting into practice here. Um, and we'll take a better look at that. I've got a fresh version of this on the printer actually as we speak. I could kind of maybe uh, switch back and we could look at uh, the live view of my bamboo. So yeah, as you can see it's got about 48 minutes left. It should be done by the end of the stream but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. This should be with the new version of the tiles, although ironically, the camera is facing in the opposite direction. I'm now using John's bamboo settings, or rather, um, his, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the word I'm looking for is uh, slicer settings for Orca Slicer. So I updated it, I used some of his settings, uh, already it looks great. <laughs> yeah, John. Sure, I will do that. Um, thank you for your hygiene tips. In any case, um, yeah, the flooring, let's take a look at that. And uh, yeah, all I plan to work on today is some elements of this. And we can go through and explain why things are the way they are. 
You can kind of see here my old flooring. This is the version that John and I came up with. Um, this has 18 um, different parallel lines. This one only has 13. Uh, but it should print a lot clearer and when I say a lot I mean a lot um, so this thing is about 13 inches in length or about 32 and a half centimeters let's say um, the larger ship if I turn on the very very rough mock-up uh, there we go you can kind of see here what the size of our ship is going to look like. Uh, I like it having this sort of bulbous head. Um, thinking about maybe that's the room with all the, the cryo chambers and whatnot. Um, but I'm not sure just yet about all of the layout in the ship, but it will be quite large and of course the shuttle will dock with it as its lifeboat. Um, so yeah, big big ship. Uh, I'm looking forward to working on this some more. Um, in the future uh, but let's turn it off for now because that one's probably going to be October November very last thing we do for the year probably or the last Kickstarter I should say this one I'm hoping to have up so we can have uh, reserve pages in the next week and the reason for that is it's going to launch on the 26th why the 26th 426 LV 426 Alien Day makes sense, right? We might do it late on the 25th just to sort of like cover, I don't know, maybe we'll go by like Australian time or something like that. So, um, just because you know it's one day, it's a little bit more limited, it is a bit gimmicky. Also, it's not great to launch on a Friday, uh, so maybe we'll be a bit cheeky and put it on you know the 25th instead. Uh, of course, in Australia, that's maybe not the best date either since it's Anzac Day but still um, let's have a look inside uh, the layout has been a little bit more solidified so um, I, I promise I will look at some of um, these comments uh, but yeah the this is a lot more open than the Narcissus and in fact uh, I took some photos of my uh, Aliens, the Blueprints book, and uh, we can kind of look, we have this sort of cross section. So again, just to be really um, direct here, the goal is not to create a ripoff of the Narcissus. The goal is to make a ship that uses the design language from the film that makes it feel like it would fit into the universe. So design language, we're looking at the semiotics, we're looking at the way the sort of like thing is structured. You want to look at the design and think, oh, this would belong in the alien universe. That's the idea. So we're kind of going all the way up to the edge of what would be acceptable um, without, you know, having to go the route of full licensing and everything like that. So. It isn't technically an alien ship. It's an alien inspired ship using the design language and um, all of that. So you can see the side view here of the interior. You can see the drop down list of the interior. This book is actually really hard to find uh, in, in uh, a digital format. So I did have to take pictures of this one. Um, and then we sort of like just have another view of the pages you can kind of, kind of see here it's a beautiful book i do highly recommend getting it it has all of the ships from the currently existing films or the currently released films rather uh so you can see all three decks of the the uh ship the, there was a long thread about the guy who made it lots of great work the solarco's in there or select parts of the solarco's in there uh and even the betty uh, as was mentioned before. Shut up and take my money. I mean, it's not my product. Uh, <laughs> Mad Wolf. But, uh, so yeah, all I'm really looking at is what did this ship feature? And there's a couple of things that I like and a couple of things I don't like. Uh, one is, and I've looked at a lot of reference photos, a, a lot of reference photos, uh, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, 
the actual Narcissus set was recycled from the bridge of the Nostromo. I didn't understand that in the film Alien, there was only ever one deck built, and they just redressed it for the three different levels of the ship. Um, so that was kind of like new for me to explore, and wow, really interesting. There are some things that don't make sense about the Narcissus. One of them is the rear airlock, uh, that being the fact that the, there's only a hatch. There's not actually an airlock. When Ripley blows uh, the Xenomorph out of the uh, airlock, uh, that's just one door angled into uh, space. So it decompresses the entire cabin. Obviously, this thing is only really designed as a lifeboat. Like, literally, it's meant to get some passengers in a short trip they're supposed to be rescued. Like, even though technically it's got um, some kind of shunt drive, like FTL, it can't go very fast. Um, I don't know what happened with Ripley. Maybe it was, like, going at shunt speed and then it sort of ran out of gas or something and was just coasting at near light speed or something like that, and that's how it ended up drifting. But um, in any case, here they've actually gone... Uh, and tried to account for the fact that they say the shuttle only takes three. I think maybe part of the reason for that uh, was actually because um, because they um, you, you know they were, they were trying to get all these canisters of air and supplies and that sort of thing to bring aboard the shuttle. So I don't necessarily know that they were going to try and uh, th that there was actually three hypersleep compartments um so yeah that that has been one thing to consider the fact here they're taking into consideration a third one so that you know there would have been room for lambert and parker if they you know hadn't died yeah 45 year old spoilers um and they added a water closet <laughs> which is probably a good idea uh, and something we should also consider. So, let's look at our deck layout. And I'll just turn off the lighting. I'm probably going to work more on the cockpit area today because the, the side sections are pretty much done. And uh, the first part's printable. Um, I did want to have three chambers, which we have here. Sorry, I'm... <coughs> That's something stuck in my throat. Um... I have a proper airlock, so you could dock with another ship, or you could land on a planet and actually, you know, have the capability to explore it. We're going to have, um, in these closets, you kind of like got your engineering sort of equipment. Uh, this is not necessarily the final form. Um, we'll put some suit lockers in there, or just um, some hanging suits, I'm not sure. Uh, here we've just got some machinery that I sort of recycled from Odyssey. And um, we're trying to evoke a similar feeling to the Narcissus. But here you'll notice there's a lot more floor space. Um, not a whole heap. And actually these are quite similar lengths. Um, but these are designed for miniatures, right? So we want to actually have enough room to put miniatures down. And to be able to make use of this space. So... I know, for example, there's like some, um, I think there's a Colonial Marines miniatures game. I think there's um, there's obviously the Alien RPG, even if it doesn't use tactical miniatures. Um, I would like to create the possibility. I know that One Page Rules has an Alien-like scenario game uh, that Papsicles is involved in. Maybe this could be used as set dressing for those sorts of games. Um, like uh, aliens versus humans and uh, hunt, skull hunters or whatever the, the names they actually use are. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to show off how um, I've been able to make use of this pipe tool that I, I showed off, I think, last week. Um, these are actually quite clumped together, so they printed quite well, um, surprisingly well. Some of the detail was lost, but the, the model I printed at was 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height. So uh, this current one I'm printing out is 0.16, closer to our 0.15 recommendation. Um, so we should start to see all of this detail. And I also wanted to add some asymmetry in here. So we've got quite a bit of exterior symmetry 
asymmetry we add especially to the interior so we do have you know most of this piping over this side this is the side of the ship where the uh, xenomorph was kind of hiding in this sort of area obviously this isn't exactly the same whatsoever but we do have our style of computer servers we've got our uh, cockpit layout not entirely finalized but you can kind of see it with this raised platform and the reason why we haven't just taken um, the well a our ship is a lot more symmetrical top and bottom so if i turn the top back on uh, you can kind of see that this is roughly mirrored top to bottom all of the engine placements and everything like that uh, there's you could flip it upside down and it would look quite similar so i, I really look at, like the way that this is looking actually if i'm being perfectly honest um it's a bit weird um but you kind of like reach this point where you fall in love with your design to some degree and it, it, it sort of like feeds the the fuel and passion. I've straightened out these windows a little bit. Actually, you could probably... Oh, the geometry's not turned on. I wonder if this will be visible if I put the lights on. You can kind of just vaguely see here that the windows, they're on their own layer. So, um, yeah, this glass layer here. If I select this, you can see the ge geometry intersects there so i need to change that back this was just from like straightening this off because i was finding in my top down viewport um that this line was on an angle and that would not have printed well so that's basically where it came from so let's see uh shurgle says something stuck in his throat after that strange attack from that skittery bug with a long tail um <laughs> is it a face i'll go well yeah, um, someone was pointing out that the facehuggers in the new trailer are not the same. Um, so we'll see see how that is. Um, it'll be interesting to see too um, how much the rumors on the web hold up or not. I'm not going to talk about that here though because I don't want to spoil it for myself or others. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the way this is looking. And again, if we kind of look at this design here, you can kind of see this this kind of paneling we haven't gone for the same design exactly but something that feels like it's quite similar i don't think ours is going to be quite as busy um and you know we do have like this has this hexagonal sort of middle section here in between what we have instead is like a sort of hexagonal ceiling feature um but, you know, we've gone for, like, here's a, a charting map, I figure, like a navigation map, or maybe it's a workshop tabletop, that sort of thing. I've been playing a bit of Alien Isolation again, getting some more inspiration. So it is still, like, in our style, in our control panels. Um, they're all kind of designed uh, as a sort of... I would say our style is a mix of uh, 80s anime sci-fi and alien ron cobb stuff so um you know we're not far from the aesthetic a, a few more control panels over here a bit of machinery um and of course our hyper sleep chambers or, or cryo sleep chambers whatever we want to call them these are being built out so that you can actually fit a miniature in there and again we're just adding a bit more asymmetry than we normally do um I think it really makes things come to life. Like if if you look at a um, like a military ship too, like it might look vaguely symmetrical on the outside, but if you look closely at the decks, you know there's all different kinds of features. It's the same as a fighter plane. It looks vaguely, mostly symmetrical, uh, but if you get in close, there'll be like you know sensors or that sort of thing or guns that are offset and not mirrored. So. Um, Let's talk about what we're going to get done today. I need to get, you know, some more iterations on this new uh, floor paneling done. I need to work on these uh, rooms at the back. I will probably stick in a fresher in one of these. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to make it like a fully enclosed thing or if it's just like the privacy thing is this door. The doors also need to change... Um, these came from the Odyssey. Uh, I think we've got some kind of intercom here. Um, but 
Yeah, and we do need to finish these new uh, airlocks because I want to make them more like the airlock from the Stromo. Um, we've got more semiotics we could put in. Uh, we need to finish this center console. Uh, and then, of course, actually, this model, I don't know if it'll be the default version or not, but uh, we do actually have under here a cargo space. And the idea being that you could actually fit another three or so um, crow sleep chambers down there if you wanted to. So you could actually, you can actually do something with this. It's a bit more of a functional shuttle. I think the Narcissus is something like 17 or 18 meters. I'm not sure. This thing would be closer to, if it's 13 inches, I'd say it's like 19, 20 meters, something like that. Um, so yeah, um, <sighs> gotta get rid of that dryness today. How's everyone's Fridays going? Let's look. We've got some intersection here going on because um, I haven't. These are the control panels that I've been working on. Let me just sort of isolate these. So I was looking at the Nostromo control panels and that sort of thing and I've made these TV screens a lot larger. I'm going to put some buttons and controls here, um, introduce some asymmetry and then I kind of have taken for the time being the bridge or um, cockpit from the, um, the small craft and you know this is giving us I really just wanted the platform, but I might recycle some parts from, you know, these controls or something like that. So, again, for the Narcissus, we have, they have this awkward space in front of the, the, the cockpit. Um, and the this front part in the actual set was kind of squished to about 50%. Um, so these windows really weren't identical to the final form, you might say. So this is not the way I would lay out a ship. It doesn't make an enormous amount of sense to me. When you actually are in a 3D space, and I'm, mind you, the one that they had on set was in a 3D space, obviously, but the windows didn't look like this, right? They looked more like this um, and it was just you know forced perspective here we need to actually use these windows so the placement of where the control panels are where your head's going to be is kind of important so for example here you can actually look out the windows um, and that's going to clearly make a bit of a difference now I don't know if I might actually end up making these windows a little bit um, like so that the panels are a, look, a little bit, that there's a bit more of a view is what I'm trying to say. Um, but we're not quite there yet. And then, yeah. So if we had the control panels where they would, they would be back here. Technically you could see out, but also, you know, you don't want to add that floor height. Again, if you look at the cutaway, the Narcissus is not mirrored top to bottom. It's like the engines from behind look pretty good, but, um, but you know, it's basically a top deck here and there's a bunch of stuff underneath that's not being used in this design. Now, obviously a lot of hardware has got to go into this sort of thing. Really, if you're going to have a shuttle that's capable of, um, limited, you know, faster than light travel. However, um, you do need to, um, for, for us, we've put the main floor level center of the mass. So if you looked at it side on, um, maybe this is the best representation here. Uh, let's see, put the top back on and we can look at it uh, maybe from behind here. So let's turn off the grid. Let's go for a six here. You can see here, this is the floor level. This is the ceiling level. 
So we've got a lot going on and I'm just admiring how this reads. I really like the way that uh, I'm probably going to add some asymmetry in the form of antennae or just like um, panel variations when I'm finally finished with uh, what the base layout's going to look like. The engines you'll be able to swap out. Um, they might be a bit too tight for the time being, I've decided. Um, so yeah, but these are all things that we'll be working on. My main point was if the main floor level is here and here, and you've got maybe the actual floor is about there, because these are open lock tiles, right? You've got your tile slots that hook into the floor, and then you've got maybe the equivalent of about two and a half meters of space on top of that. So we have, since, since we have a physical print and we want to make this playable, right? We want to make it useful. So these rooms, for example, are way bigger than they were on the Narcissus, right? It's this little closet here. Um, and maybe this thing on the other side, that is a little bit bigger. But still, you know, it doesn't take up much room. There's probably not a lot of headroom on this. Um, so what we would be doing instead um, is, yeah, having this more open floor plan, there is a lot more room. And this also makes sense. If you could fit all the machinery in right, this kind of layout makes sense. But here you've got a bunch of different tiles you can work with. You could actually have an encounter inside this thing without it feeling like it's completely cramped. Um, you can fit a miniature or two into these rooms at the back. Uh, and what we end up with though is that the windows end up way higher than the floor level, so we've gone up a couple of steps. Now I was thinking we would kind of do the opposite thing to the Nostromo um, bridge layout. I don't know if we can maybe just do a, a little I don't think I have the graphics for that at the moment, but basically they have these placements. Actually, let's just um, I'll get a, a window up here somewhere and um, let's see, this could be it. And bridge schematics. And then maybe we can just look at the layout as it is. Uh, I'm just looking for a an image uh, on my second screen that will give us a bit of a better idea about where things are. This might be the one. Uh, that's probably going to take a while. Where is it? Nostromo unplugged. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so open image in a new tab. And the seats are you know, these little, almost like little office cubicles, um, although quite cramped. So I'm trying to do the opposite effect here. So what I'm thinking is that we actually have some kind of a bulkhead wall here. And then if you remember from the film, uh, this sort of helmet type thing, you could see above the seats, like the very first uh, scene really wants things start happening in the film is um, is when you see you know the image reflected in the sort of emergency helmets that they have now we're gonna have to do something new for this campaign that is a little bit more alien like um, my idea is that we're gonna have a sole survivor in a few different costumes to go along with this and then, of course, develop the larger ship. Um, I don't know if that's a great idea, but that's, that's what we're talking about at present. Um, no, no control workstations or anything like that. This is the base ship is what it is. It's not meant to be complex. Once we get into stretch goals or ship variants, then we can talk about alter alternate. Um, layouts but here we do have this sort of cramped space to work with so we're kind of it'll be this raised platform and then i just want to make that sort of cubicle uh, element that we're looking at so 
There's a couple of things we can work on in the next uh, 20 or so minutes. And um, I think honestly though, the best thing to do is to focus on this control panel area. So first I'm gonna look at and see what I can potentially recycle or take out. What I usually do is I take the model that I have um, and then I'll just copy it and I'm going to add that to my um, Narcissus Workshop layer. These are just working titles, so I know the reference. I can probably change these names now to uh, Erebus now that we know uh, we have a name for this thing. So I'm just going to add it to that layer and it will make it disappear because it's a hidden layer. Um, let's see, uh, it needs a cat. <laughs> Uh, or a dog. Dogs don't do well against xenomorphs. Yeah, that's true. Probably because the cats are from the same species. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete everything but the platform so we get a better idea about what we've got going on here. And if I turn on the Narcissus Workshop, uh, you can see we already have these kind of side control panels uh, that I was working on. Um, this is actually just based on the sort of workstations from the, the stalwart. But basically I wanna close this off a little bit so you've got that sort of cubicle feeling and then maybe we can stick a helmet or something up up the top. Um, I wanna bring these seats back a little bit. Selected, it's just a reference wireframe. Uh, but if I put it to R, it's a reference uh, object and will be in the scene. So again, uh, if I set it to T, you just see the wireframe. If I set it to R, it's a referenced object. And now when we select things, it's not going to try and select the glass. Uh, which can become very annoying very quickly. So yeah, I'm just moving these back into, into place. We probably only need to work on one side. Um, you can see I'm not really finished with figuring out where all of these uh, parts are going. We do have some annoying... Uh, top parts here that we can probably add to a different layer if we really wanted to um, And actually I'm just going to create a temporary layer I thought I got rid of that one uh, and we're just going to Top stuff really bad Naming I just want it on its own layer so we can turn it on and off and get it sort of out of the way um, so yeah, we do have to shape these interior parts. You can kind of see here, this is where we need to work with, the, this is the shape we need to work with. This is going to be floor panels that are built in on these parts. Some floor panels, like in the central, central section here, will be customizable. So you can add the open lock tiles yourself. Uh, so let's see, uh, in fairness, I would back a Red Dwarf base campaign in a second. <laughs> Um, is anyone else getting the spinning circle of doom? Oh, like stream not working or something? It looks like it's all good from my end, so it could be for you. Uh, okay. It seems like a couple of people are having issues. On my end, it does say excellent connection, so I don't know what the deal is. Um, we will have... It actually already has gun mounts. You can kind of see here we've got some open lock connectors here on the, on the wings. Uh, we will probably add some hard points or at least variants with hard points. Um, usually it just becomes too work intensive to do all of these things all at once. I really tried hard with the Delta to have everything done before we even launched the campaign and I got pretty close. Um, I don't know that we'll have it in this case. What I'm most worried about now is getting some pictures up. Basically where we can show off the cockpit and the general layout so I can make a face, uh, sorry, a Kickstarter page. Um, and that's it. That's, that's where we'll be at. Um, and hopefully then we can have the registration page up for about a month. Uh, which is usually a fairly good period of time. We're going to actually have a second one up fairly soon uh, for 
the mongoose campaign but we need to get that all sorted and in place i'll probably sort that out next week um we've gotten permission we can use some mongoose art for that it's going to tie into this um fifth frontier war campaign uh, that they're having um and so the miniatures should be mostly military focused now i don't know how much i can sell mongoose on as far as what i'd like to see like it would be nice to release some aliens aside from zidane um but you know we're kind of going to be a little bit more restricted to what they want to see um and i don't think this is necessarily a bad thing because uh we will have mongoose marketing behind us that is very appealing to me um so we just i want to get this so it is parallel here to these control panels and maybe the height wise too it wants to be like oh, must be a bunch of geometry behind it that it was conflicting with so if we move this back into place i still i still will need to figure out how this is all going to print but i i think the orientation will basically be how you see it here so the chairs will be printed separate all of these controls will be combined into one the idea being that you could just turn your chair around to access these additional keyboards and information um, leave in the coffee uh, or holders or the cup holders I guess um, although we might have to work on this lip um, the lip here is not going to help service um, this frame very well uh, but you know th these are kind of blockers for me because I want to test print the ship uh, but I don't want to do too many copies of it how many cup holders are there at the moment too um, the outer worlds Co coalition would have Varga and sword welders allied with the Zodani uh, Darians and some Varga allied with the Imperium yeah um I don't know exactly what the thought is. I know that what we've been talking about is, you know, combat style miniatures. So probably like Imperial uh, troops, maybe some G carriers and tanks, grav tanks, um, for both the Zodani and the Imperials. Now, maybe we can get cheeky because there are, you know, Varga and other races in the Imperium. Um, so but it will be more military focused to begin with uh teacup holders <laughs> i mean there's probably some kind of interface thing that you stick in there for the tea but this this is uh not a three world empire ship per se let's say um so yeah we're we're coming along okay i feel with this design so what I might just do is, um, I might just take these faces here and um, I'm not going to worry about this lip for now because um, we do probably have to get rid of it uh, if we're going to use this configuration. Either that or we move this even further back, but um, I'd like more of a back wall here. So I'm just going to grab these polygons for the time being and we're going to do a, a very basic extrusion. Looks like I got too many there. Um, and we're just going to bring this back to the edge. So that should be... Oh, I would have thought that was aligned. Maybe I had the alignment different. But let's just put it somewhere like this. Uh, and then really what I'm looking to play with here is the shape of the wall. Oh, I can hear a harness in the wild moving about in the kitchen, probably hunting for coffee, if we're being honest. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to rebuild some of this. Uh, I'll probably go through this process a couple of times over. And then I'm going to extrude this to something like this. So it's not going to be like completely blocking things off. Um, you might be able to get our seated miniatures in here, and in fact, you should be able to. Um, but obviously, you're not going to be able to get a mini with a base up and standing here or that sort of thing. So, 
probably coming to here looks all right. You sort of step up. There's enough room that you can conceivably, you know, rotate this chair around. Um, we need a bit more foot room in here. Uh, so we do need to expand the base a little bit. Uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of talk about cup holders and stuff. So, um, yeah, this this back wall, I think maybe maybe this thing, you know, could be featured. Wait, what? What the hell just happened? Oh, that was selected still, okay. So maybe this thing, I was thinking about having it more like mounted down here. Actually, I might duplicate this instead. Because the crew would conceivably need this too. And when I designed it, it was like back of the chair. Um, it's kind of like got this tank of oxygen, I guess, with like a this hose around it, right? So the idea being you put on the mask and attach it and the uniforms of our miniatures for our designs were more based on um, like that the uniform itself is a sort of a pressure suit so that wouldn't be the case here um, I mean it doesn't leave a whole heap of room but you can still conceivably you know move the chair out a bit move it in if you were seated in it um, or we might you know just move this back so it's more like this the walls a bit thinner um, I may want to go over and look at this a bit more because we might want to get that helmet up to you know being behind the chair um, we might want to offset this just a little bit I, I don't know um, I do like the paneling here I think we'll probably follow that around to the opposite side uh, but yeah, the general look we're trying to go for is something similar to the, the Nostromo. Um, let's see, so if I just did a quick, uh, like, Nostromo bridge. And we do a an image search. Again, like, the very first sort of image that we see here. Uh, let's see, is that quite large? It's fairly large. You can see the helmets here on top of the seating, right? The seating is more built in. Here we don't really want to do that. Um, but we do need to take these sort of things into consideration, I think so too. To, we're trying to recreate some of the looks. I didn't even notice that these red things here, let me, um, this is a larger image, so let's open this in a new tab. Uh, oh, actually, no, uh, what we want to do is open the image in a new tab. So here we go. Um, these red things here are actually flashlights. Um, and then you've got these seats that I think were actually from old uh, fighters. Uh, probably World War II or Korean era fighters that they just sort of uh, were able to strip down and that sort of thing. So you've got a bunch of different machinery in that. We want to, what we're looking to recreate is the feeling of this, you know, almost claustrophobic, stuffing everything in. Um, even the sort of like stations have this sort of like work cubicle feel to them. Um, and then, you know, we've got vents, we've got all kinds of things that we could potentially integrate into it. Uh, so let's see, <laughs> Varga urinal, <laughs> urinal. <laughs> what is going on there? Um, really should have a fresher for each person. <laughs> The hanging back suit locker was a pretty good one too. Um, are you talking about our one, or are you talking about the one in the um, in the what's I call it in in the Nostromo or the Narcissus? Because that's another thing. Alien Isolations had me thinking that the spacesuits in the lockers inside Nostromo are the same kind that they wear, but they're not actually. It's a completely different kind. Um, but yeah, uh, nice reference image. Um, just kind of keeping it in mind. So like the idea of this helmet coming up over the top is interesting. I think we'll probably do something with the chairs too, just to make them feel a bit bulkier. Maybe adding, you know, some, some wings or something. Um, 
I might put the headrest a bit lower than it is right now too. So I don't know necessarily that this will look good, but the idea is kind of like if we put the top on and turn off the workshop, if you imagine there was a miniature in there, you would just see the head there and maybe the tip of the helmet. And that's kind of like what we want to create, like a silhouette that you can recognize, right? But at the same time, from the base, that does look a bit silly. So we'll see what's practical. Um, certainly we wouldn't need this handle on the opposite side. And um, it stands to reason that if there's a third passenger, they would also need uh, something like this. I'm even considering actually putting a chair down here. Um, but I'm not sure. This thing is going to be connected to this thing, and it's definitely going to need a um, to print with this being the flat end. It kind of makes sense that there would be something to clip into that so we don't just have this ugly, uh, you know, uh, print surface on the opposite end. A hydrant, yours. Good use of space, so the ones are more like the emergency environment suits from Traveller. Uh, I guess so. I guess so. Although there's no real suits here, and there aren't on the Nostromo either. So I think it's more a case of, like, something that you just put on that lets you sort of do something before uh, things depressurize. It might... Say you've got 30 seconds... Um, if you're stuck all of a sudden in a decompressed compartment, uh, maybe this gets you up to a minute or two, so you can actually, you know, get to a proper airlock or something like that. I don't know. I'm guessing here, um, maybe it's just something you stick on your head so you can actually, you know, use your eyes in a decompressed space and maybe have some air. Um, space doesn't... Like, there is... It depends on the size of the hole, but like explosive decompression isn't necessarily going to happen. Um, uh, it all depends on the size of things. Actually, like a larger chunk is probably better. Like it'll go out quicker, but the fact that there's more surface area for it to go out um, helps. But it's like it's not necessarily going anywhere. Um, it's more a case of like it can gradually escape. And the pressure difference is what sort of forces it out. So, um, I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. Uh, but I do know, for example, the te ambient temperature isn't going to drop to, um, you know, absolute zero immediately. Heat takes the time to dissipate. It can't dissipate through a vacuum. Uh, or rather, that happens extremely slowly. Uh, so the main issue is not that you're going to turn into an icicle immediately. It's, the you know, going from the right pressure level to zero pressure and uh, surviving that hence why you're meant to like push all the oxygen out of your lungs close your eyes um, and all that perfect so what are we going to change on this thing I think this is like going to be quite easy to manipulate we just turn this off uh, we end up with this hole here and I'm kind of I think we'll be mirroring some of these parts and making larger panels um, Maybe rather than having this wall, actually, what we can do is, um, you know, grab bits and bobs off this one. I'm actually going to duplicate it, and I'm going to just delete everything around this, aside from, well, what the hell just happened? I think I had two selected. Yeah, there's two different versions here. So if I go F8, that's selecting two different models. If I go there, it's just the one. So yeah, if I delete this, technically I should be able to start deleting everything aside from this. Actually, let's just invert this. Because um, what I want this plate to be is like just the basis for our black wall. The back wall. So. If we had to do everything from scratch to get to this detail level, uh, it would just take months and months and months uh, and wouldn't be really practical for us. Right now we're able to work as quickly and efficiently as we can, only by virtue of the fact that we have such a massive backlog of, of, of models in our catalog. Mike keeps doing this for now, it's sort of like you need to change the angle. So. 
this should now basically match where that back line is and what we could do is just start taking some of these shapes like um, say from here to there and we could take that and just move it over so we're kind of creating a back wall um, that's just on a a sort of different level um, we would probably want to add back in some of the screws or something like that um, but I think we could also maybe just go here and then we can go up instead not all at once um, or maybe all at once let's see let's just bring this up so that the height is equivalent to where we might want this back wall so I would say somewhere like here maybe let's turn off the grid maybe like there so sorry about that we can turn off the top stuff layer again so we we can see down into this a bit better so we're not necessarily going to have this being blank we, we could do something where we sort of increase the size of that vent or um, you know we duplicate parts of this and just make it look like it's scaled um, It should look like you know you have a fuselage and then you have the control panels bolted in like it's designed to have multi functions right so maybe there's a a version of this ship that has a single um, like literally we could make instead of like two tiles wide in the middle we could do a version where it's just one um, and it would just look a little bit sleeker a little bit meaner uh, maybe that's more like a, a sort of fighter type uh, situation or something like that um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be all um, let me think. I just want it to be a bit reusable, I guess. Stream is glitching. Okay, great. I don't know what to do about that. On our end, it looks like it's in excellent condition. I can try refreshing this to see. Um, yeah, it keeps saying that for me. Um, I don't quite know what to it definitely is glitching because it says I've been online for like an hour and a half um, so yeah I, I don't know what to do about that sorry guys um, we are getting to the four o'clock mark um, if the stream is glitching like you guys are saying uh, maybe we should looks good from here so I'm I'm writing that into the chat I can't explain why it's not uh, looking good uh, but hopefully you guys have seen some serious progress some some details some asymmetry here um, I'm gonna continue working on this until I knock off in a, like a, about an hour maybe an hour and a half um, and I appreciate uh, your time talking to me I hope hopefully after the stream this is going to to be more stable for people so you could watch it back um, yeah I just I really am enjoying working on this ship and the more detail that we put in the more excited I get for when we can put it out um, so hopefully sometime in the middle of next week we'll be able to send a sign up page and uh, you guys will be able to start collecting those emails uh sorry or sending us you know signing on so that we can have a huge impact when we actually launch this hopefully tie it into alien day um and you know i've already talked to papsicles there's probably going to be some cross promotion in there so we can you know get some of his miniatures or, or variants of them or something i don't think there'll be a whole heap of it or new stuff because uh he's just had a baby girl so congrats to paps uh who's now a paps <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah look at this mess so much stuff going on and this is, this is just going to get messier alright guys we should be back next week thank you for joining me uh, we will be back next week with more traveler updates and I will talk to you then bye guys <laughs>